doing a short overview on ellipses and let us start with the one at the center zero zero the most important thing you have to remember that A is the major part so A is considered to be greater than B if they are equal then you have a circle this is kind of the idea that you have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals to 1 if the bigger number, the square of it, is under the x, then you definitely have a horizontal ellipse, which is evident right here. And we have a major axis, which is from here to here, will be twice the a. Now, a um, minor axis is similarly from negative b to b. And we also have foci points, which are always on the major axis. And the way the c is defined is that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So the idea is, is that here is the example of the vertical ellipse and this time the major axis is y-axis because the larger number, the square of it, is under y. And again, it's equal to 1. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's say we have this one right here, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 equals to 1. The key is to remember that it's a squared equals to 16, which that means that we have to take the square root that means a equals to 4. And it was under x, so we have a horizontal ellipse. So b squared is equal to 4, that means b equals 2. Now c squared happens to be 12, which means um, that we can take uh, 12 is 4 times 3, and that becomes 2 square root of 3. And uh, so we can actually turn that into a decimal, that way we'll be able to graph it. Um, but I'm sure for the actual answers, we're going to use the radicals. So here is how the ellipse would look. Now, for the second example, the a squared is 9, but b squared is 1. And that's how we probably find the rest of the um, points. And this would be a vertical ellipse, simply because the larger number is under the line this time. And here is how the point is. Now, if you see something like this, this is not in the standard form. So to get it to be there, we have to divide by 36 right here to turn the radius into 1. And because we divide it by 36, here is what we get. The 9 divided um, by 36, that's what we get 4 in denominator, and 4 divided by 36 is 9. And once again, then we get the rest of the numbers the same kind of way. And we can plot them. And here is how the um, graph is right here. And to find the equation of the ellipse, if we know the foci and the vertex, if the center is at 0, 0, then necessarily the vertex um, is actually in the major axis, so that gives us the A. Uh, the foci gives us the C if the center is 0, 0. This is usually easier. And then we have to find A squared, well, that we can easily square the A to find that, but to find B squared, we actually have to plug in and solve. And um, because we can rearrange things, b squared is actually a squared minus b squared. And that's how come we got 12, but all we need is b squared to plug into the equation. Uh, we don't need the b actually for this example, uh, unless you're graphing it. So here would be the equation. Um, if we have the foci and just simply x-intercepts, not vertices, then, because the foci are on the y-axis, we actually have a vertical ellipse, so the things change. This time we know b squared, and we know c, and of course c squared, but we don't know the a, and this is what it equals to, which is 20, and that's how come we get this equation. Uh, now, we'll look for the triplet ellipse um, in the next video. Thank you.